I'm Anastasia Chatska, a fashion designer with over 20 years of experience and a sewing educator. And I'm really excited you're here to share another sewing adventure with me today. Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today we're gonna make a raincoat. And it's gonna be made out of a clear floral vinyl. You can obviously choose any fabric that you would like. It rains so much in the spring and I hate having a drab raincoat. Who wants to wear black and gray and olive green all the time? Lame. I love adding a little color to the spring and the gloom of the rain. So I am going to show you how to make a clear vinyl raincoat so you can show off all of your fun, awesome outfits under the clear vinyl. We have some really special techniques we're going to be using. We're going to be using a Teflon foot. We're going to be using a bias binding foot and we're going to be doing a few other things as well. So make sure you follow along and learn how to sew a clear vinyl raincoat. If you're not already a subscriber to Sew Anastasia, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you know when all my new videos come out. Also, I'm now teaching virtual sewing lessons and sewing lessons in person at my design studio in Chicago. Information for that is going to be on SewAnastasia.com or go ahead and click that link down below. I'm gonna go over some of my favorite features on this raincoat that I took into consideration when designing it. So first, a hood. A hood is necessary on a raincoat. One time, I was caught in a rainstorm, my raincoat coat did not have a hood on it. You know who was soaking wet and the raincoat didn't help at all? Me, because all the water went right down the back of my neck in the raincoat. Lame. Okay, so we have a hood. You can tie it in a bow, you can tie it in a knot, you can do whatever you like with that. And we also have a zipper front, so you can get in and out of it real easy. No buttons to fuss with. I hate fussing with buttons on a raincoat. So this is nice and secure. The one we're gonna be sewing is going to have a flap on the front over the zipper as well. We also have some pockets. So we've got some patch pockets and they have a flap on them. So we wanna keep the rain out of our pockets. So that's why we have a flap on them. We also have a waist tie. So if you want to tie it on your waist, you totally can. Keep it nice and fitted. Tie it in a bow, tie it in a knot. And one of my favorite features is all the bias binding that's on it. Now something really fun that you can do is use a contrast bias binding. I'm gonna be using a matching bias binding, but contrast bias bindings are so fun. Supplies for this project are going to be as follows. You're going to need some matching thread. I'm gonna be using contrasting thread, or you can use contrasting thread. You're going to need your scissors. You're also going to need a rotary cutter, which is great for cutting vinyl, so I highly suggest it. You're also going to need a bias binding foot to make your life easy. You're also going to need a Teflon foot to make your life easy as well. Along with a 24 inch zipper that is separating. It's very important that this separates so you can get in and out of your coat. You're also going to need some bias binding. You're probably gonna need about 15 yards of it because we're gonna bias bind all the edges. If you want a very specific amount, go ahead and measure the perimeter of all the seams on your pattern. And most importantly, you are gonna need some awesome vinyl. I'm going to be using this black floral, which is clear. And you're going to need a fabric for your ties. So I'm going to be using this black fabric here for my ties on my jacket. And don't forget the pattern. The pattern you can download from my website at SoAnastasia.com under the digital downloads. Now this pattern is going to be big because it's a jacket. So if you're printing this out at home, expect a lot of pages to tape together. This is going to be like a giant puzzle. Or if you don't want to do that, I highly suggest sending it to pdfplotting.com or any large format printer. So all you have to do is cut it out. You don't have to worry about taping a bunch of sheets together. And this pattern is gonna come in sizes extra small through extra, extra large. So make sure you check out the measurement chart so you know exactly what size to cut out for yourself. First, we are gonna cut out all of the pieces so that way we can sit down at the sewing machine and just start sewing. But there's so much important information on the pattern that you need to follow. Double check your grain lines, make sure everything is cut out on the grain properly so that way it sews up properly. And also check to see whether something is cut on fold or if it's cut two or maybe it's cut one. So let's get cutting. If you need help finding your grain lines and laying out your patterns, make sure you check out my video for that. There should be a card here and a link down below. 
Okay, so let's start cutting and let's follow around the edge of our pattern. And remember all the seam allowances included in here so you don't have to worry about leaving extra. And just want your rotary blade to be right next to your pattern so we get a nice crisp edge. The great thing about the rotary cutter with this vinyl is it's gonna be so smooth. Now I have everything cut out and your pieces should look something like the ones I have cut out here. So let's go over them real quick and just make sure you place the right ones on fold and cut enough. We're gonna start here with the sleeve, which is cut two, so you should have two sleeves. Next here I have center back. Center back is cut on fold, so make sure your back is one full panel. The front is gonna be cut two, so you'll have two separate pieces for your front. Next, we're gonna come up here to the hood. The hood is placed on fold, so when you open it up, it should look something like that. Next, we're gonna come down here to the pocket. I chose to do two pockets, so I have two flaps and two bottoms of the pocket. Next, this funky piece here is going to be for the top of our hood. It's almost like a little brim for our hood. Here, you're gonna have the zipper placket. So zipper placket is just cut one. And then next, in the black fabric, you're gonna have a cut two for two ties, one for each side of the hood. And then this really big black one is just cut one, and this one is going to be our belt for the raincoat. The first thing we're gonna do is bias bind the edges of our patch pockets and the flap for the patch pocket as well. Because the first thing we're gonna sew on the coat are going to be the pockets on the front of it. So let's go over to the sewing machine and set the bias binder up. So I have my patch pocket here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is bias bind this U shape, and then I'm gonna do the straight edge on the top. So I have my bias binder foot all set up with the bias binding in it, so let's give it a go. So when you're placing your fabric into the bias binder, make sure your fabric's all the way over to the right, so that way when we sew, the bias binding is catching the fabric. Very important. You can back stitch and continue. So you can see where it's coming out of the machine, the bias binding on it, and we've got our stitch on it. Now, if you wanted your stitch closer to the edge, you could always move your needle position over a little bit as well. Now, when you get to the end, I want you to leave some extra. So go ahead and just bias bind off, and then you can go ahead and cut. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bias bind the very top edge of the pocket. When you start this out, it could be a little difficult because you're going over the existing binding. Just give it a little push, get it through there. Make sure you leave some extra bindings. We're gonna fold that under later and cut. Your finished pocket should look something like this. We have the curve sewn and we have a piece of binding on the top and we've left a little extra flap of binding. This is going to get turned to the inside when we sew our pocket down. Now grab your pocket flap and let's do the exact same thing. We're gonna sew the curve first with the bias binding. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put bias binding on the straight edge and make sure you leave those extra pieces on the ends so that way we can flip them under when we sew it to the jacket and we have no raw edges. They'll all be finished. Remember, if it gets stuck in the beginning, you can pull the tail in the back. And cut. So before I sewed the binding on the top of the pocket, I made sure to cut off these extra little flaps that were coming from the U shape. So make sure you do that so you can get your binding in the machine. And I did the same thing up here as well. Now that you're done with those two pocket pieces, go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other pocket. Next, we need to place our pocket on the front of our jacket. So there's a pocket placement on your pattern. So what you need to do is grab your awl or something to mark with, and we are going to mark that pocket. So what I'm gonna do is just poke a little hole where the drill holes are, the spots for the pocket, so that way I know where to place the pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it through here. And here. 
I'm actually not gonna do the bottom ones, I'm just gonna do these two top ones. And now when I remove the pattern, what I need to do is find the two little holes that I've put in it. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut down these extra pieces of binding I left on the end. I only need them about a half inch long. Everything else we can go ahead and cut off. Now we're gonna take these little extra flaps, flip them to the inside, place our pocket down on the front of the jacket where we put our marks. And now what we need to do is go ahead and stitch on the pocket. This is vinyl though, so I don't wanna use pins on it. So I'm just going to hold it in place or you could also grab some tape and we can tape it in place. So now when I sew, I'm gonna be sewing right on the edge of the binding. And we're gonna sew all the way around this U shape and leave the top open so we can get into our pocket. Now's the time you want to put on your Teflon foot because we want to glide over the vinyl while we're sewing it. If you're using a regular metal foot, there's a good chance that it's gonna stick and not want to move forward. So go ahead and put on your Teflon foot and let's top stitch the pocket on. Don't forget to back stitch, but when you're back stitching vinyl, just make sure it's one or two stitches. If you use tape, make sure you remove it before you get to it or just move it down. Make sure your edge is flipped under. And cut. Okay, so now we wanna flip the edges under for the flap and we want to line it up right at the top of our pocket. And then what we're gonna do is just sew a straight line across the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew down the top of this pocket. Let's go ahead and just continue sewing all the way down to the end and make sure you back stitch when you get to the end and make sure those ends are turned under. and do the exact same thing to the other side. We have both of our pockets on the jacket and they should look something like this. So we have the top open and we have a nice little flap to keep that rain out. Next, we're gonna grab the back panel to the jacket and we are gonna sew the shoulders together. So we're gonna sew the front shoulder to the back shoulder on both sides. And we are gonna do this at a half inch seam allowance because after we sew them together, we are going to bind them together with the binder. So we're gonna line up our back panel to our front panel and we are gonna end up sewing our shoulder seams together here at a half inch. I'm also gonna switch my thread over to black so that way it matches all the inside details. Back stitch and cut. Now I'm doing the other shoulder. Back stitch at the end and cut. So here's my seam for my shoulder and I'm gonna insert it in the binder and bias bind this edge. Now I've got my other shoulder in the binder. So you can see we have our half inch seam and then we have our binding. So the binding is gonna keep the edges nice and soft against your skin so you don't have the roughness of the edge of the vinyl. So you can see our raincoat is really coming together here with our pockets and our shoulder seams almost starting to look like a raincoat. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna set in the sleeve cap and then we're gonna bias bind those seams together as well. So we're gonna sew the curve of the top of the sleeve into this armhole here. So we're gonna place right sides together and sew them together and then we're gonna go back and bias bind them together like we did the shoulder. So we're gonna line these up right sides together. This is a great time to use clips if you like to use clip sewing because we can't use pins. And we are just gonna sew this all the way around the curve. Make sure you back stitch. And as you keep doing this, keep lining up your edges. The nice thing about vinyl is it does kind of stick together.
Back stitch and cut. So you can see I've got the sleeve sewn in to the armhole. So now what we need to do is bias bind that seam together. So I've got my armhole and my sleeve seam together and I'm gonna go ahead and bias bind them together. Now you can see that we have the bias binding on the armhole along with that seam and it's looking beautiful. Next, we're gonna go ahead and just bias bind the bottom of the sleeve so it has a nice finished edge. So we have the single layer in there and let's just bias bind it up. Now what we're gonna do is sew the underarm seam and the sides near the jacket all at the same time. And then we're gonna go back and bias bind those edges together just like we did the armhole. I'm starting at my sleeve opening and remember you have half inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch. Keep everything lined up and make sure you're sewing your right sides together so your seam allowance ends up on the inside. Great time to double check because our fabric looks the same on both sides because it's vinyl. When we get to the underarm seam, make sure both of these seams are lining up. Now we're working our way down the side of the coat. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. Back stitch and cut. Now put on your bias binding foot and let's bias bind that seam together. Okay, don't forget the back stitch. and do the exact same thing to the other side and then we get to try it on. So excited. Our sleeves are looking great. We have the structure of the raincoat just about done, but now we need to add the hood. We gotta put the zipper on and the zipper flap and hem it. So let's get to work. The next thing I'm gonna do is bind the hem and the zipper placket. I'm gonna start at the edge of my hem and just bind the bottom edge of the hem just like we did when we did the bottom of the sleeve. Make sure your binding from your other seams is nice and flat. When you get to the end, back stitch and cut. hem is done, it should look something like this. I love the binding detail. It makes it look so nice and finished. Next, we're gonna bias bind the curved edge of the zipper placket, leave open the flat straight edge. have the front flap all bias bound, I want you to grab your hood. So your hood cutout is going to look something like this. Really bizarre, right? So what we want to do is fold it together, right sides together. So you'll notice this notch cut out of the back of the hood. We wanna leave that right now, but what we wanna do is create a half inch seam right here. Don't forget to back stitch. And cut. I bet you can't guess what we are going to do next. That's right, we are going to bias bind the seam together. I bet you're picking up a pattern. We are sewing and then we are bias binding. We're sewing and then we're bias binding. So we're doing this because we don't want the edge of that vinyl to scratch us and we didn't sit down and just bias bind all the edges first because that would make the inside of it bulky. So we're sewing it and then bias binding it together. 
Next, we want to sew together this notch that's here. So we want to take it and pull it apart. So that way it's going to create a straight line. So you'll notice this is taking shape as a hood. So this will be the back of the hood and this is the front of the hood. So we're gonna go ahead and sew it straight, a half inch seam, and then we're gonna bias bind it together. Okay, let's sew it up. Don't forget the back stitch. Okay, let's pop on that bias binder. It's so easy to go back and forth between the two. I love it. Okay, and we're just gonna stick this in there. Cut. Okay, so you can see we've got it sewn and bias bound. Now don't worry about these end flaps. We're gonna take these and turn them under and back stitch them down later. As you can see, it's starting to look like a hood. We have to put on the little rain flap on the front of the hood. So grab the one that looks like this shape and we are gonna sew it on to the front. So I want you to fold this in half and find out where the center is. Once we figure out where the center is, you wanna know where the center is on the straight edge, not the curved edge. The curved edge is going to be towards the outside of the hood. So the straight edge, we are going to sew to the hood. So we wanna line up that center mark with the seam that's already here for the top of the hood. Now make sure your seam is going the same direction. So if it got sewn down in the back of your hood to the left, make sure over here that it's pushed to the left as well. We want this nice and flat. And now you can go ahead and put a clip here or tape it together and we're gonna sew this on. So I have my flap clipped on and it's down here and the right sides are together. So I'm gonna end up sewing from end all the way over to the other end here. Notice that this doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. We don't want that. We just want it to be on the top right here. Okay, now what you wanna do is put on your bias binder. And let's bias bind that seam. Okay, let's get our edge in here. Now that we've finished that, it should look something like this. So we've got our nice stitch and then we've got our nice bias bound edge. Now what we're gonna do is bias bind the outside of the hood. And we're gonna start from the point, go all the way around and come to the other point. And make sure you're capturing the seam that we just did going face down. a straight line across the back of our hood and then we have a line across the top of our hood creating some shape and then we have our extra little rain flap going around the edge of the hood for some extra detail. So our hood should end up looking something like this. Now it's time to put the zipper in the jacket with the zipper flap and then after we do that, we'll attach the hood to the jacket. Now grab your zipper flap and your jacket. I'm gonna be putting the zipper flap on the right hand side of my jacket. Now we want to place it so that the raw edges are meeting and the right sides are together because when we're wearing this, the flap is gonna flip out. So we also wanna make sure we start a half inch down from the neck because we need to leave that seam allowance there for the hood to sew on. So we're gonna go ahead and sew this on and then we're going to bias bind it together. So don't forget you have a half inch seam allowance and make sure you back stitch. Okay, let's switch our foot. So easy. 
Now we're gonna bias bind the center front. Now that we have the zipper flap sewn down, it is time to sew the zipper on. So let's go over exactly how to attach the zipper. So I'm using a separating zipper. So I'm going to unzip it, and the piece I don't need, I'm gonna set aside. And now this zipper, I'm gonna flip it so that it's face down. And I wanna make sure that the zipper tape is coming all the way up to the neck, and I wanna line it up with the edge of my fabric. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a few clips in there so it stays in place. Now my zipper doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of my jacket. It doesn't need to. You could make it go all the way down there if you'd like. And now what we're going to do is stitch in the very middle of the zipper all the way down to the bottom. We also need to attach the zipper foot. So grab your E-foot, the multi-purpose zipper foot, and attach it. So I've got my E-foot on and I've put it on the left side of the zipper foot. I've not moved my needle position. We're going to back stitch. Come all the way down the zipper. If you get to the bottom and your zipper is in the way, go ahead and lift up your zipper foot and pull the zipper tab up to the top. And now you can easily finish the bottom. Back stitch and cut. Now that we have the zipper sewn on, it's time to flip it under and top stitch it down. So let's go over how to do it. So your zipper sewn on should look something like that. And now we're going to flip it under and you want to flatten this out. You could iron it, but use a pressing cloth. And now we're going to stitch on the side of the jacket, not on the side of the flap. So we're gonna stitch over here a quarter inch next to the seam, making it a top stitch, and we're gonna come all the way down. Make sure you switch back to your Teflon foot and line everything up so you can do a top stitch. Look how nice that stitch looks. Again, when you get to the bottom, if the zipper pulls in the way, lift up your foot and push it up to the top. Now we're at the end of the zipper, but I wanna come all the way down to the bottom of my jacket. And if you've got this little extra flap down here from our bias binding, let's make it a half inch long. We're just gonna fold it under like this and then we can continue sewing. Back stitch and cut. Now that we have the zipper and the zipper flap and the top stitch done, it should look something like this. With the flap pushed over in your top stitch and you can see a little bit of our red zipper through it, so fun. And then if we flip it over, you'll notice that we have the zipper face down, we've got our flap and we've got our zipper teeth here. So your zipper should be looking something like that. Next, we are gonna buy find the left side of the center front jacket. Okay, let's sew this up. Don't forget the back stitch. Now grab the other side of your zipper and let's place it so the right side is face down on the right side of the coat. So we're gonna place this down, making sure that the zipper tape is all the way at the top of the neck. And then what we're gonna do is same thing we did to the other side. We're just gonna stitch it in the middle all the way down. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna top stitch right next to the zipper teeth. Okay, let's sew the zipper down. Now let's move on to the top stitch like we did on the other side. Now that we have the zipper finished, it should look something like this down here. When we flip back the flap, you should have your zipper. So exciting. 
we are gonna attach the hood to the neckline. So when we line this up, we are gonna sew from zipper, lining it up, lining it up, all the way over here to zipper. Now keep in mind, seam allowance is a half inch, and these are on an angle, so make sure you're lining this up at a half inch when you start, and then it'll end up being flipped back and line up perfectly. So lining up the ends here could be a little tricky, so you might wanna put a clip or a pin there and make sure when you sew, it's going to be lining up. So let's sew that hood on the jacket. Okay, let's sew it up at a half inch and don't forget to backstitch. And cut. What? And now we're gonna bias bind that neck. Could be a little tricky with the zipper here too. So just take your time. Now that we have the neck finish, all we have left to do are take these little ends, cut them, fold them under, and sew them down. And then we can sew our belt. I'm gonna show you how to do one of these and then you can go ahead and do them to any of the spots on the coat that need it. So I'm gonna cut off the extra, I'm gonna leave about a half inch. Now what I'm gonna do is fold it in and stitch it down. Because it's bias binding, it's not gonna fray, so we don't need to double fold it. the ends tucked in, let's grab those black pieces of fabric I cut out and let's sew them together. So we are gonna sew these together and make a bunch of little tubes, three to be precise. So these smaller ones are going to be for the necktie and the longer one is going to be from the belt. So fold it in half and let's sew it up and turn it right side out. I'm going to be sewing down the side a quarter of an inch. Now we're gonna use a tube turner, so make sure you shut one end of your tube. Back stitch and cut. Now that we have all the tubes sewn up, grab your tube turner. If you don't have one of these, they work amazing. Totally suggest one. Just the tube turner by Dritz. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take the blue tube and we're gonna put it into our tie we made. We'll push it all the way to the bottom. We're gonna take this little wood stick here, we're gonna push it in, and then it pops out. It is that easy. And now we have turned our tube. So you're gonna wanna do this to all three of them. We're gonna wanna iron them so that the seam is on the outside. I have everything ironed and they look great. They're nice and flat. So now it's time to give them a nice edge stitch. We are gonna stitch an eighth of an inch next to the edge all the way around the rectangle. And we are gonna do that for all these tubes. Now go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other two. Now grab your neckties and we are gonna sew them to the hood. So we want to put the tie right where that hood extension starts and we wanna line up the raw edge right below the bias binding. We're gonna go ahead and sew that down and then we're gonna flip it back and then we're gonna sew it down again. And that way it's nice and finished on the inside and it's gonna be nice and finished on the outside. Don't forget the back stitch. Okay, and now I'm gonna flip it the other way. And I'm gonna sew a little box around it. So you can see how we sewed the tie down and it's nice and finished and secure. Now do the exact same thing to the other side. The last step is going to be creating some belt loops so that way our belt will stay around our waist. I'm going to do this by just sewing some bias, binding together and sewing loops on the side seams. So I'm going to be putting the loops right here on the waist at the side seam. So I'm gonna have one loop here and one loop here and then our belt will nicely sit in it. 
Right now is a great time to try on your coat and see where do you want your belt to lay out on you. You might want it higher, you might want it lower, or you might want it right in the middle of your waist. So try it on and figure it out and sew your belt loops on. So I'm just gonna run my bias binding foot with no fabric in it. That should be enough and cut. Okay, so I have my bias binding and we want to fold under the end, maybe about a half inch. Because I don't want to pin into this coat, I'm just going to go ahead and clip it just so I can get it over to the sewing machine in the right spot. And then we're also going to fold under the other end. Let's see how big do we want this. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. Fold it in a half inch and then go ahead and clip it to this side too. Okay, so there's our loop and now we just need to sew it down, but just make sure you flatten out your fabric first. Okay, let's sew this belt loop. Don't forget the back stitch. And cut. Then I'm gonna unclip the other end, slide it down, flatten it out. Place it right on that seam. And cut. Now that we have our loop sewn on, go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. We did it! We finished the raincoat. Sewing vinyl can be a little challenging, but totally worth the reward. Now I have an awesome clear floral raincoat. This raincoat is going to protect us from those rainy days. We've got our rain flap covering the zipper, no water getting in there. We got patch pockets with flaps, no water getting in there. And we've got a hood, no water getting into our coat. We are gonna stay so dry and fashionable in this raincoat. It's going to be great to wear this spring. And don't forget, I designed the pattern. So if you wanna download it, sew along with me, make sure you go to digital downloads at sewingastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. If you have any questions or comments on how to sew this raincoat, leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, make sure you follow me on Sew Anastasia on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and all those fabulous social media websites. And don't forget about TikTok as well. And if you want to download this pattern and sew along with me, make sure you do it and check it out on SewingAnastasia.com because I would love to see your raincoat project. So make sure you tag me in your projects or send me photos. And I would love to share the photos with everyone else so we can keep each other inspired and sewing. If you want to help support Sewing Anastasia, hop on over to Patreon. Even just a dollar a month really helps us out. It keeps us going, growing, and sewing. Also, I'm now teaching virtual sewing lessons and in-person sewing lessons, so make sure you sign up for one of those and keep your adventure going and sewing. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia. Bye!